Hello, you my friend and sister Sharon, and today I want to give you the secret to warring in your flesh, your old nature, how to battle and win your conscience. Our conscience is vitally important to walking a victorious life because what you are conscious of or you're, you're paying attention to, that's where your conscience is. You are aware. Whoever gets your attention, my friend, be it God or the enemy or the God of this world, that's who will have rulership over you. That's who will have uh, dominion literally over your, your conscience, your life. And I want to give you this very powerful scripture that tells us, my friends, where the seat of much defeat, where it lies. It lies in your conscience, what you are constantly aware of. Follow me, my friends. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 tells us this. How much more than uh, will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death. That's Hebrews chapter 9. In other words, what the writer is saying, if you stay aware of this present world and all of its delicacies, treasures and pleasures, you will continue to sin against God. And where sin is, death is present. The spirit of the living God produces life. Jesus said in John chapter 14 or 16, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. To be carnally minded, Romans, I believe chapter 8 tells us, to be carnally minded, follow me close. In other words, to have your conscience, your mind on the things of this world is death. And it will continue to pull you and make you a slave to sin and death. But through the shed blood of Christ, our conscience, it, it comes alive to God. And that is why the writer told us to let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. So what I want to give you, my friend, is five simple gateways that will take you from the vine. Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. And if you separate that branch from the vine, it will wither away and die. The scripture I just gave us in Hebrews chapter four, uh, 9, verse 14, connects those two. In order to stay in the, the vine, abiding in Christ, he has to have your mind. You have to put your mind on things above, my friends, or you cannot dominate. You cannot conquer this flesh, this body. Paul calls the, the physical body a body of death. You can't dominate. So let me give you some portals that will steal your conscience and keep your mind on you, where you are conscious of, conscious of yourself at all times. You're just self-conscious. You can't win in this spiritual fight, friend. Number one is ungodly music. Many Believers in Jesus still take for granted. They think that they can still listen to all their sexual music, their hip hop, uh, pop locking music, their R&B music, their country music. Friends, you're going to be defeated because music was created for one purpose, to worship God.
So when you begin to muse, M-U-S-E, keep your mind, music is a constant rehearsal. It's like a deep thought and turning of the lyrics and the music. You are literally musing over it. And this is why many times we'll put a CD on repeat and we're just being indoctrinated. This stuff is coming into our soul, into our conscience. And and this is why many of you are so angry and sexual because you have disregarded that this will move you from the vine because it does not glorify the Christ. It does not glorify the creator and it keeps you in, in the earth. So ungodly music It will pull you from the vine. Jesus said, I'm the vine and apart from me, you die. You can do nothing without him. You can't watch this. You cannot produce fruit. And what is the fruit that we should be growing and producing in Christ? The fruits of the spirit, peace, joy, temperance, long suffering. My friends, hope. These are things that are lacking in many of our lives because we are self-conscious, conscient. We we are conscious of of, of self. And, And until we learn to die daily and pick up our cross, like Jesus said, you cannot abide in him because he's not gonna compete with our selfish ambitions. He's not gonna compete with your job, your your um, ambition for education, unnecessary higher education that many people are going after. So ungodly music, education, all of this could pull you from the vine. Number two is sexual attire. Um, I talk about it a lot on the channel. Why? Because my friends, when you go through great lengths to adorn your body, to to expose your, your breasts, your hips, your thighs, your cleavage, your tattoos, and all these different things on the body, on the body suit or the actual body suit. This is your body suit. You will become self-conscious. You can't help it, my friend. You're going to be thinking about, do they see how pretty, you know, this cleavage? You know, you're thinking about it. You done took all that time to prop them up. So when you're out in the amongst, amongst the people, you're not conscious of God, friend. You're thinking about, you know, they still propped up, right? You know, you know, you know, can they see the Tweety Bird? You know, I just want to make sure I got it just right. So they Come on, you self-conscious and you're going to lose. Some of you have lost weight. Now you're self-conscious because you're in a smaller bodysuit and now you are using sexual attire. You know you're not supposed to be wearing that low-cut stuff. You know that stuff ain't supposed to be hugging them hips. And what do you do? You you end up playing that game, friend, and it pulls you out of the vine and it makes you self-conscious. And friends... You can't have victory. Number three, drinking any anything that brings you under a buzz or your mind is, you know how it is when you get high. Oh, friend, you're going to end up being pulled from the vine because Jesus wants us to be vigilant and sober. We must practice sobriety at all times, my friends. Number four is bad relationships. If you stay in a relationship where the wisdom of God would tell you to get out, but you stay, you could be pulled away from Jesus, my friend. And the only thing that's on your mind is that bad relationship. That's why you have to be very uh, sincere in your walk with God to get wisdom and strength strategy, how to walk lightly amongst your enemies that are usually enemies of God. You become so conscious of that bad marriage, so conscious that you and your spouse are unequally yoked. This is all you think about all day, every day. Then if you're not careful, literally, my friend, you have been pulled, your conscience have been pulled from the vine and you're no longer abiding in Jesus Christ. You're abiding in the midst of the earth and and and, and all your pain and frustration. This keeps your conscience at all times and you will live a defeated life. Number uh, five, I might be past numbers now. The next one is feelings. If you are a very touchy feely person and everything sends you up and down and you don't have any uh, boundaries when, when it comes to emotion, oh friend, you will stay constantly thinking you losing your way because you do not have control over your soul. You have a feeble mind, very weak minded. So feelings being real flighty friends, it will pull you from Jesus. It'll pull you into self-consciousness because the only thing you're really aware of and you allow them to 
take you wherever they want you to go is your feelings. So that will pull you from God consciousness, from walking in the spirit. Um, the next one would be dead bread. Friends, when you are listening to people who are false teachers, their bread is dead. And if you keep eating it, you're going to die spiritually because most dead bread that's being fed in this hour, it, it facilitates, it propagates you serving mortal men who claim that they have been sent by Jesus. But you will know that it's not so because my friend, you don't have any victory. You're, you're, the only time you feel some type of way is when you're in the midst of these congregations. These people serving dead bread, lies about God, lies about who God truly is, my friend, it will pull you from Jesus. The next thing that will, because dead bread, remember, is they're using the word of God. They're using the inspired scriptures, okay? The inspired words of God. They're using them. And Jesus said he was the bread of life. So if they're giving you dead bread, claiming that they're serving a, a Jesus, the real Jesus, it's not the real Jesus because everything they're feeding you, it does not produce any life. Dead bread. That's what I mean by that. The next thing is the cares of your life. House note, I, you know, uh, bills, all this kind of stuff will pull us out of the vine and make us self-conscious. It makes us conscious of the things that's going on in our world, our children, our spouse, um, what my kids doing, where they at, what they doing, who they talking to. Friends, mm -mm, you got to let that stuff go. Last but not least, my friends, I want to give you that one thing that could trigger your consciousness and bring you back into the awe of God. See, what we want to do to maintain our consciousness and our where we are aware of Jesus' sacrifice, your victory comes from remembering the sacrifice of Jesus. This is how we overcome this world. This is how we overcome our enemy. This is how we overcome sin. We stay focused that Jesus died so we could get in the kingdom of heaven. When we die, that as we turn from our sin and hate sin and we put away sin, we, we, we journey to victory by keeping our focus on Jesus' sacrifice for our sin, my friend. But I want to give you this last thought to keep, it's a strategy. Holy Spirit gave me this years ago. Nature is one of the quickest ways when you are trying to, to become conscious of the, of the glory and the awe of God, to get your awe. See, when you lose your awe, awe, like, oh, that's awesome. Once you lose that, you become self-conscious and you become sensual. Everything is what you can see, touch, taste, hear. This is where we are defeated. The quickest way to trigger that awe is nature. I've said this to you all before. Nature. This is why I keep fresh flowers or if I don't have money for fresh all the time because they could get expensive. I love artificial flowers because they look just as good. Don't these look real? <laughs> Friends, nature is one of the quickest ways to get your conscience on the glory of God. So I want to encourage you, even the men, get you some fresh flowers. If you don't want to do flowers, buy yourself a plant. Jesus said that Solomon in all of his glory was not even arrayed like one lily of the field. So in that, what he's saying, God is so detailed and so glorious, how everything is so different. Everything has its own identity. This is where the true follower of Jesus finds victory. You keep your mind on his glory. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. That tells us, my friends, your conscience, you do not want it to be bombarded with this world. Rituals and traditions of men can also pull you, snatch you away from Jesus. Jesus Christ is the only way to peace, but you must purpose to guard your heart, 
your conscience at all times. What am I thinking about? Come on, friends. Walk with me on this one as I close this exhortation. What has your conscience? Where is it? What sits on your awareness throughout most of the day? Because if it is you and your kids, your spouse, your job, your money, the job you lost, your fear of the job you won't find, just all the cares of life, it will snuff out the glory and the majesty that God is worthy of our praise if we will just open our eyes, even in the midst of the trial, the trauma, and the test, his glory is all around. I love you, my friends. Some of you, go get them fresh flowers. Go and get you a plant, brother. Stop talking about, I'm lonely. Feed the plant. Give it water every day. Just give it enough water. Come on, you got something to do. So I'm sitting around thinking about you, dousing that conscience. He that has an ear, let him hear. I love you, my friend. Till next time.